The Godfather is more than just a movie. It's a cultural phenomenon that's been captivating audiences for decades. With Marlon Brando's iconic portrayal of Vito Corleone and Al Pacino's powerful performance as Michael, it's no wonder that critics and fans alike can't get enough. And the fact that it's based on real-life mobsters and events only adds to its appeal. This cinematic masterpiece shaped the way we think about the Mafia. It even influenced the way the Mafia thinks about itself. There are actual FBI recordings of real-life mobsters quoting Francis Ford Coppola's classic. A Don once played the film's soundtrack at his daughter's wedding, and even Gambino underboss Salvatore Gravano once said, I would always tell people, just like in The Godfather, if you have an enemy, that enemy becomes my enemy. However, while The Godfather is now cherished among gangsters, there was a time when the Mafia tried its best to stop the movie from ever being made. So, let's take a look at some of the true stories behind The Godfather franchise. The opening scene of The Godfather introduces us to the wedding of Connie Corleone, where Vito Corleone spends the day taking requests from his guests. Among the attendees is the famous singer Johnny Fontaine, played by Al Martino. Fontaine confides in Vito about his struggles to land a part in a film and asks for his help. Vito sends Tom Hagen to Los Angeles to pressure a Hollywood executive into giving Fontaine the role. When the negotiations go bad, the executive wakes up with the head of his prize stallion beside him in bed and Fontaine gets the part. But did you know that Johnny Fontaine was based on the real-life experiences of Frank Sinatra? The similarities between Fontaine and Sinatra are too significant to ignore. Both men were singers who used movies to restart their failing careers. In fact, Sinatra's Oscar-winning performance in From Here to Eternity is often cited as the moment when he made his comeback. And just like Fontaine, Sinatra had connections to organized crime that helped him get ahead in Hollywood. Despite the obvious parallels between Fontaine and Sinatra, director Francis Ford Coppola has been careful to point out that Fontaine is not meant to be a direct representation of Sinatra. In his director's commentary, Coppola explains, Obviously, Johnny Fontaine was inspired by a kind of Frank Sinatra character. Nevertheless, the influence of Sinatra on The Godfather is clear, and it's just one of the many real-life connections. Vito Corleone, however, is based on a combination of infamous mafia heads like Carlo Gambino, who also had a backstory that was similar to Vito's. Like Vito, Gambino was a Sicilian immigrant who arrived in the United States as a young man and quickly rose through the ranks of the Mafia to become a made man. Eventually, he became the head of the Commission of the American Mafia, the same position that Vito holds in The Godfather. Despite his long and successful career in organized crime, Gambino managed to avoid spending much time in prison. He was only sentenced to 22 months in jail on a tax evasion charge. However, just like Vito, Gambino died of a heart attack. He led the commission from 1959 until his death on October 15, 1976. Joe Perfacci, another real-life mobster who influenced the character of Vito Corleone, had a significant impact on Vito's backstory in The Godfather. Like Vito, Perfacci used his legitimate business as a front for his criminal activities. In Profaci's case, it was his successful olive oil importing company, Mamma Mia Importing Company, which gave him a steady stream of income in addition to his illegal dealings. Profaci's success in the olive oil business earned him the nickname The Olive Oil King. Similarly, Vito Corleone had a successful olive oil company, Genco Pura Olive Oil Company, which he used as a front for his illegal activities. He started the company with his surrogate brother, Janko Abandando, and the business allowed Vito to maintain a respectable public image while carrying out his criminal operations. The use of legitimate businesses as a front for criminal activities was a common practice among real-life mobsters, and the filmmakers of The Godfather were careful to incorporate these details into the characters and storylines of their film. But Frank Costello had the biggest influence on the character of Vito and also on Marlon Brando's performance. To prepare for the role, Brando studied recordings of Costello's testimony at the Kefauver Senate hearings on organized crime, which were widely publicized and even shown in movie theaters. One notable aspect that sets Costello apart from other mob bosses, and similarly sets Vito apart from many cinematic gangsters, is his aversion to violence. According to his lawyer, George Wolfe, Costello was a civilized man who rejected the brutal violence that previous bosses had embraced. Brando portrayed Corleone as a principled mafia figure with a similar distaste for unnecessary bloodshed. Like his father, Michael's backstory is also based on real people. Mobster Joseph Bonanno did not desire his son Bill to follow in his footsteps and enter the family business. Instead, he motivated Bill to pursue a legitimate career and convinced him to attend law school, similar to how Vito encouraged his son Michael to do the same. 
The journey of Michael in the movie parallels that of Salvatore Bill Bonanno, who also diverted from his path of law school to the family business after his father, Joseph Bonanno, was kidnapped. The character of Mo Green was inspired by real-life mobster Bugsy Siegel. Both men were known for their larger-than-life personalities and their involvement in the development of Las Vegas, with Siegel building the Flamingo Casino. They were also of Jewish descent and met a similar fate, a shot to the eye socket. However, while Siegel was killed for stealing money from the mob, Green's disrespect for the Corleones led to his demise. But it isn't just the characters that is inspired by real life. The legendary scene in The Godfather where Michael Corleone crosses the point of no return by shooting two of his father's enemies in a restaurant was inspired by a real-life event in mob history. The public execution of Giuseppe Joe Masseria, carried out by a group of hitmen in a Coney Island restaurant in 1931, was orchestrated by Lucky Luciano, who was seeking to seize power from his boss. Luciano had invited Masseria to lunch and then excused himself to the men's room, leaving Masseria vulnerable to the hitmen. The Godfather's depiction of the restaurant shooting was a nod to this notorious event in mob history. Also, the congressional hearings that brought mobsters such as Costello and Vito Genovese before the public in the 1950s and 1960s bear a resemblance to the Senate hearings in The Godfather II, where Michael was compelled to testify about the mafia. The most significant parallel was Joe Valachi's testimony, which marked the first time a mafia member publicly acknowledged the organization's existence, not as a loyal mobster, but as a government witness. This testimony was instrumental in bringing down the mafia. But why did the mafia try to stop the production of the movie? In the early 1970s, the Italian-American Civil Rights League demanded that Paramount Pictures stop production of The Godfather because they believed it portrayed Italians as violent criminals. The League held rallies and raised $500,000 to try and halt production. However, the League was founded by Joseph Colombo, leader of the Colombo crime family, who wanted to fight against what he saw as racial harassment by the federal government. Colombo was determined to stop the film, and when protests and TV interviews didn't work, he turned to more extreme measures. Mobsters began intimidating and threatening producer Al Ruddy and even stole expensive film equipment. Mob-controlled unions also refused to let director Francis Ford Coppola shoot in certain neighborhoods. Eventually, Paramount agreed to a meeting with Colombo, who surprisingly only had one demand. The word mafia had to be removed from the script. Al Ruddy accepted the deal and Colombo became excited about the movie, even visiting the set and using his influence to cast the role of Carlo Rizzi. However, the story ended tragically when Colombo was shot and killed just a few blocks away from where Coppola was filming a scene where Michael Corleone is wiping out his enemies. Colombo's attempts to erase the mafia from The Godfather had backfired and the movie went on to win an Oscar for Best Picture.